Hey guys, today we're going to compare two lenses, the EF and RF versions of the Canon 50mm f1.8. We're going to go over the differences between the two lenses, figure out who should buy them, and who should look at an alternative. If you look at the names, you'll quickly realize that they're basically the same lens, except that the RF version is newer and takes advantage of the new RF mounting system. The question is though, does this give it an advantage over the older EF version? Also, what's the whole nifty 50 thing all about? Let's jump in and find out. When it comes to focal length and aperture, both these lenses are identical. They both have a fixed focal length of 50mm and open as wide as f1.8. For those of you who regularly watch my channel, you know that a fixed focal length has the advantage of producing sharper images compared to a variable aperture lens or zoom lens. Also, the fact that the aperture opens up to f1.8 allows you to use the lens in lower light conditions. Normally, if you use the kit lens like the Canon 18-55mm, you'd be limited by the fact that its aperture can only open to f3.5 or 5.6 if you're zoomed all the way in. If you're confused, when it comes to aperture, the lower the number is, the wider the opening. As a result, the lower the number, the more light is allowed to reach the sensor, thus you'll be able to shoot in low light conditions. Doing this allows you to avoid having to adjust your shutter speed or ISO, and thus escaping unwanted motion blur or noisy shadows. Before we move on, I'd like to point out that I've reviewed the Canon 18-55mm lens on my channel, along with quite a few other Canon lenses. You can find the link down below to them, or you can click the card in the top right corner. And now, let's have a look at the physical size of these two lenses. The first thing you'll notice about both versions of this lens is just how small and toy-like they look. When testing these lenses out recently, I used a Canon R5 body, and they both look hilariously small on it. Even though I had to use an adapter for the EF version of the lens, it still looked quite funny on the R5 body. In terms of build quality, even though I'd have to say both feel relatively solid, the newer RF version feels somewhat more premium in the hand. Neither of them feel as solid as the Canon RF 85mm f1.2 LUSM, or the RF 15-35mm f2.8 LISUSM, but they also cost a fraction of what those two lenses cost, so that's to be expected. In terms of physical size, both of these lenses weigh around 160 grams and measure around 1.5 inches in length, or nearly 4 centimeters. Regardless of your opinion of their diminutive size, I'd like to point out that there are actually quite a few instances where a smaller lens would be more suitable. For example, if you're doing street photography, you ideally want your setup to be as small as possible. Therefore, a lens like this would actually come in handy. Also, the fact that it's a 50mm lens will also allow you to shoot from a bit more of a distance, thus allowing you to be a bit more inconspicuous. Now that we've covered the physical aspect of the lens, let's dive deep into the more abstract notion of whether these two marvels of engineering take comparably good photos. Much like most lenses, these tend to be sharper in the center whilst allowing for a bit of vignetting in the corners. I personally don't mind that, as when I shoot portraits, which is what I mostly do, my models tend to be in the center of the image. Also, I find the vignetting tends to lend my images more depth, and thus I don't even bother trying to remove it. When it comes to such a subjective notion, it's really up to you to decide what you prefer. As a quick side note, because the Canon RF 50mm f1.8 has the RF mount, as long as you use it on a camera body with built-in image stabilization, you'll actually be able to benefit from that, despite the fact that the lens itself does not have IS. From what I understand, this is because of the fact that the RF mount allows for more communication between the camera body and lens, thus allowing you to achieve in-body stabilization. By the way, 
I have reviewed both the Canon R5 and the R on my channel. You can find the link down below where you can click the card in the top right corner. I'm now going to show you some photos and videos I've taken with these two lenses. First, we'll start off with the EF version and I'll present you with a video montage, followed by photos. Then we'll do the same for the RF version. As a quick side note before we begin, please bear in mind that these videos you're about to see have not been stabilized in post-production. There's been no warp stabilizer applied or anything like that. What you see is what you get in terms of video stability. After you've watched a montage, let me know down below in the comments which lens you think produces nicer images. And with that, let's begin. If you're finding this video to be helpful, don't forget to leave a like as it'll help with the algorithm and other people will be able to find this video as well. And now, back to the video. A question some might have is whether this lens is good for vlogging. Due to the fact that it has a focal length of 50mm, that makes it rather zoomed in. That means that if you turn it around and film yourself, you'll probably get a close-up of your nose as opposed to your head and shoulders. What about for YouTubers? Is this lens good for content creators? If you intend to sit down when shooting videos or have someone else hold the camera, absolutely. The focal length will make you look natural and the wide aperture will allow in more light, thus enabling you to film in even less than ideal lighting conditions. If you intend to film yourself with it, bear in mind the issue discussed a bit earlier and make sure you have enough room so that enough of you is in frame. When closely inspecting the body of these two lenses, you'll notice that they both have the usual manual focus ring and they are both equipped with AF slash MF buttons. Now, in terms of longevity, both these lenses need to be handled with care as neither of them have weather sealing. I personally purchase a Sigma ceramic filter for all of my lenses that I keep long term as I'd rather break a less expensive filter as opposed to smashing the glass element of the lens. In conclusion, which lens should you buy? Should you actually buy either? First off, I want to point out that both of these lenses are fantastic for not only beginners but intermediate photographers as well. They both take fantastic images and when used with a camera with built-in image stabilization, the Canon RF 50mm f1.8 
actually becomes a decent video lens as well. This is incredibly useful because as the Nifty 50 moniker implies, these lenses are very versatile and useful in a whole host of situations. You can use them not only for portraits or landscapes, but also for product photography, street photography, and much more. The 50mm focal length allows for versatility, which is a desirable attribute for a budget lens to have. So, which one should you buy? If you have an older camera and mostly want to do photography, I'd say just buy the EF version. Upgrading to RF can be quite expensive, so if you're just starting out or doing this as a hobby, it might not be worth the investment. If you have a camera with an RF mount and you already have the older EF model, assuming you mostly want to do photos, I'd recommend just getting the adapter. That way, even though you're missing on the extra image stabilization, you'll be able to use your older EF lenses without having to spend too much money. If you do want to do video, and you have an RF camera with in-body image stabilization, then I'd recommend getting the RF version of the lens. You'll be able to shoot smooth footage and take great photos at the same time in low light conditions. But what if you have an older EF camera and you also want to do video? In that case, I'd recommend watching my Canon EF-S 18-55mm kit lens review, link down below, or click in the card in the top right corner. If you watch the video, you'll see exactly why this affordable entry-level lens is surprisingly good for video. Also, I've reviewed both of these lenses separately on my channel. If you'd like to delve deep into one or the other, you'll find links down below as well. Do you have any questions? Feel free to leave a comment down below and I'll do my best to get back to you. If you'd like to purchase any of the items I've mentioned in this video, I have a link down below where you can view them. Thank you for listening. Don't forget to leave a like, subscribe and hit that bell. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.